Great. You know, just to share in the last two verses of uh, Daniel chapter one in the morning, and just trying to look at God gave them 10 times what the other people have. <laughs> and that's just, I know when God does a thing, he does it. <laughs> God does not do things in small measure. I mean, that's the whole thing we say in scripture. Just Christ says, give and it shall be given unto you in good measure. Not only will we give you in good measure, it will be shaken to get that, to ensure that there's no empty space. In, eh? And it says it will be shaken to get that, so there's no empty space, and it will run over. God is not a, doesn't do things in small measure. So when people talk about a poverty God, I don't know where they get that God from. That is the devil. It's a doctrine of the devil to preach to us about a poverty God. Because God Almighty, the God of heaven, is not a poverty God. He did not give to Daniel and his friends two times more. He did not give them three times more. He gave them ten times what the other people had. So that they could not be easy. They could not, nobody can say, mm -mm -mm. there's no error. There's no margin of error. There's no, there's no one that can say that this is done by man. This is God because there was a difference. He gave them 10 times more, right? And that is the example we have to follow in scripture, not the lies people tell us. Our God is a God of abundance. Jesus Christ says, I will give you more and more and more abundantly. People then try to excuse it because they are lazy. Oh, it's only spiritual things. It's not talking about physical. No. It's only spiritual. God, God has given us life more abundantly spiritual. Those are stupid people. Because the first part of it says that the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He doesn't still come only to steal his spiritual things. Doesn't the devil make people sick? Doesn't the devil make people poor? If the devil is doing his own in physical things, why is it that we think God will only do his own in spiritual things? He says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we know that he steals in physical things. He steals in the mind realm because it makes people lose their mind. It makes people oppressed. And he steals also in spiritual things. If the devil is doing his own in all three realms, why would God only do his own in spiritual realm? Why would God not want to give us physical blessings? Why would not God want to give us a sound mind? Why would not God want to, em to enrich us spiritually? That's a lie. God wants to give us 10 times more. 10 times more. 10 times more. But it doesn't just come by chance. It doesn't come by mistake. We have to, it comes by faith. That you believe that God exists. And you allow that existence of God to overwhelm your person, to overwhelm your mind, to overwhelm, overwhelm your physical body. The Bible says, if that same spirit that dwells in Christ Jesus dwells in our mortal body, it will give it life to overwhelm your spirit. The reality of God, 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 in the fullness of his existence has to overwhelm us. It has to overwhelm the way we think, the way we act, the way we carry ourselves. That's the only time we can get the, we can get the reward. It says, he that comes to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder. He is and he's a rewarder. And I see God even in small things in my life. You know, I'm here, my children are away in the U.S., Right, they're in colleges where they stay in hostel or in apartments where the people they stay with are not Christians, they are not people they know, they are people that come from different other families with different other influence. A lot of them drink, perhaps some of them smoke, perhaps some of them are wayward, you know, and they're there. <laughs> I'm not there physically, but I can trust God. I can trust God that the God that I serve is not only in Nigeria. He's not only where I am physically. He's everywhere. I can trust God that God, the same God will be with them. That is with me here. I can rest in God. I can rest in God on their behalf. I can rest in God on their behalf. And that God is coming true for me. And that God wants to come true for every one of us. God help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Anyone wants to have anything to that?
Yeah, my, my, my contribution to this is that um, we should not allow the enemies to rob us of the blessing that God has already given unto us. Because even though some people believe that once people are rich, they will not be able to serve God. But that is not what the Bible says. So if riches that God has given to us, it's for us to be able to serve him more than when we don't have anything. So, and those who have that, that is only a spiritual thing that uh, this is how heaven is. We can also enjoy heaven on earth. So we don't have to wait until when we get to heaven for us to be able to enjoy all the blessings that God has already given unto us. And I think that this is as a result of the teaching from the church in the past and depending on where one fellowship but the most important thing is for us to be able to see bible as what god has already given to everyone so there's no excuse anything that anybody is teaching that the bible is not say that that when you have money when you have good health when you have all these things that uh, that goes to show that you are not really serving god because god has to test you god has to do this god has to do that so in the process of that, people are not actually taking up responsibility on how they would develop themselves. Even when it comes into area of finances, you see different teachings and different kind of this. I see some of the people sitting in those churches, if you tell them this, they said, oh no, come to think of it, rapture can happen anytime. And some people <laughs> say that, oh, you know what? See, when you lay down all these things, you lay treasure on it and all that, you need to put it in heaven and every other. But you begin to wonder, these are people who have been talking about the rapture. We know rapture is going to take place, but rapture hasn't taken place. And some of them, Absolutely. they have missed opportunities. And that is why we have to learn from the mistake of those of them cannot go back and actually bring back the hand of the clock and make it happen again. Because maybe some of them, some opportunities have lost. Age is no longer on their side and things like that. But on our own time, I believe that as children of God, like you mentioned, as parents, you have done your part. You pray for them. Wherever they go, they are in the hands of God. Irrespective of you have done good to other people's children. So, and that is part of what God does. When we do, he said he's a rewarder. Anything that we do, we need to be careful because the reward will come. It's not only monetary value. If you see somebody's child that is going to do something wrong, you try to correct, you try to mentor, you do all those things because you don't know that you are sowing a seed for in the future. Now the children are there now. Nobody is there to watch over them, but God is watching over them. Amen. And that is why parents who have this fear and who worry about, so, you know, I'm not there. My children, I'm just this, and this is the kind of world that we are in. God knew that this is going to happen. A time is going to come. You cannot be there all the time with them and leave everything into the hands of God, and God will definitely perfect all that concerns them. Let's start to our contribution to, to this. Amen, amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate every word that you said. And it's so true, so true. A lot of pastors, geos have deceived us. You know, the funny thing is that they were becoming rich while the members were poor. You know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I left school in 1990 and there were a lot of people that were expecting Jesus to come back, come back a year and they did not concentrate on their school work. Some people even left school without graduating. You know, a lot of them are regretting it today. That's 32 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we need to preach a balanced gospel. We need to balance, preach the word of God, not just what we think or our feeling, our excitement, you know. And that's the problem with a lot of places today. They just preach what they want to preach, you know. But God will help us. God will help us. His word is available. And, you know, as I was praying, I was just praying for such people this, this morning, this afternoon as I was praying, because the, all of that came to mind. And then Jesus Christ talked about the fact that if the time is not reduced, even the elect will miss it. And, you know, and those were the kind of people I was praying for this afternoon, you know, people that are innocent, you know, that have been carried away by these false doctrines, false teachings, you know, that they will not just be swept away, that God will have mercy on them, you know, and God will help us all in Jesus' name.